All right, what's up, guys? I'm Garrett Marchesano, and this is the MMA Rundown, brought to you by FanDuel. We're going to go over one topic for about three minutes and then move on to the next one. Today, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Holds it down, Holdsworth. <laughs> What's up? Let's go. All right, so the first topic we have for you guys is UFC 264 taking place this weekend, July 10th. Woo! So this is an exciting one. It takes place in Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena. Both guys should be extremely comfortable staying in the U.S. this time, not an Abu Dhabi trip. Uh, Connor says that the, uh, it's one of his uh, many excuses of, uh, of losing the per- last fight is that early morning fight. And so first off, Chris, are you, are you excited for this weekend? What are you thinking? Yeah, you know, the the week off of no fights, you know, the UFC has been pretty consistent lately, you know, pumping out event yeah. after event. So this Independence Weekend, I'm like, where's my UFC fights yeah. at? So we got to wait another week to this uh, this epic card, Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor yeah. 3. And uh, I forget the quote, but Conor just said something on Twitter about, you know, the third fight, no one ever makes it. Oh, yeah, yeah. He what did he no, say? Yeah, I saw that too. He was yeah. like, no man makes it out alive with three fights with yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's already pumping it. I, I, I can feel the the old Connors. Uh, you know, his aura is coming back. You know, he's talking a lot of crap and he's building this up. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited too. It's gonna be so funny. Uh, you know, uh, people who listen to this a lot have heard that I, that I was at the last one in Abu Dhabi. I was fortunate enough to go. And the press conferences were fun, and it was great to be there, but it was the nice nice guy, Connor, you know? So he was just playing yeah. and had his family there, and never a bad thing to say about Dustin. And it was cool to be there 10 feet away from him as they're chatting, and, and, uh, but I wanted it to be that memorable where they're flashing back to it all the time. Now, this one is going to be epic because there's so much shit for yeah. them to... You can only get so many things out on their little Twitter wars, but when you're in person, they both have mics in front of them. There's gonna be so much trash talk. I wonder if he actually like sat down with somebody or just like really like thought in and and and, and saw that man. I wasn't my I wasn't the normal Connor that I'm usually like talking crap. The confident self. I, I played more of the the humble kind of yeah. guy going into this, and Definitely. I wonder if he actually like s- sat down and like, man, I gotta change that up and I go back to the old me. He has to, right? Yeah, I think he did because Dustin even admitted in his post fight interviews, he's like, yeah. you know, in the first fight, I was half beaten before I stepped in the octagon because I felt so much pressure. I wanted to beat the guy so bad, yeah. I was overloading on my punches. He wanted to stand and bang with them. In the second fight, he was so comfortable, less pressure. Yeah. And now, you know, in that first fight, he was on his original contract, which was, you know, Dustin was probably making like 50 grand to fight, 50 yeah. grand to win. You could look back on that. That second fight, he got a million even, right? So yeah. there's a whole another confidence ball game for him. Yeah. Now in this fight, God, I think Dustin's, uh, you know, they'll release the pay. I, I bet it's probably more than 2 million plus shares. And so he's getting paid. We'll see if if Connor can kind of rattle him during the press conference. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious about it. Another question is how now that things are opening up. What are your plans uh, to to go watch the fight now that it's cleared up? You know, I usually like to get out and watch it somewhere. I like it at home as well. But what do yeah, you think? I, honestly, I'm more of a home watcher myself. I can't stand being around uh, the casual drunk MMA fans. It's just not my thing. As much as I I love the fans and love the support. I just, I, I, I can't do it, you know, like, I'm trying to watch the fight, I'm trying to listen to the commentary, <laughs> I got people asking me questions, you know, all that stuff, so I would much rather watch it at home, and then I, I just can watch it better, and I can break yeah. things down better, I don't have a bunch of other stimuli going on, but... If I'm feeling kind of, you know, sparky, I might go to Twin Peaks because I got really cold beers. Oh, nice. And they got really good-looking women, too. So. <laughs> there you go. That's not Twin that. Peaks, let's Twin go. Twin Peaks. <laughs> I, got, I noted. That's, that's not a bad place to be. What I was doing before the pandemic is I started liking going to Buffalo Wild Wings because get a few friends. They have great, huge, nice, clear TVs. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's funny you just said this. I notice when places have colder beer than others, and I got to give it to B Dubs. The food is, you know, the fried shit, but cold, cold beer. That well, I can well tell. Twin Peaks is like known for like keeping their beer at a certain temp. Oh, really? So, like, if it doesn't come out at that certain temp, like, you know, it goes back. Yeah. <laughs> but, yo, it's not the temp I want. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's about three degrees cooler. <laughs> nice. So, things are opening up. It'd be fun for the fans. I know it's going to be a full arena, T Mobile arena. It's sold out extremely quick out there in Vegas. 
And I am looking into possibly getting a little crazy here now that uh, things are opening up. I might get froggy here and jump over to Vegas for the weekend if I can convince uh, my padre here, Jeff, to join me. So I'm thinking about making a two-day two -day trip. Oh, so for the event? For the event. I would cover the press conference, and I'd cover like uh, the fans walking in the arena, do some interviews. And if I could weasel my way in with some contacts and maybe get a couple extra tickets, I'd go. Yeah. But even if I went and didn't go to the actual event and watched it around town and did some interviews and connect with some fighters and stuff, it would, I think it's yeah. totally worth it. Yeah, for sure. So, it's always good to network. We'll see what happens. All right, let's move on to the next topic. We've got Nick Diaz, official comeback. Wow, I didn't hear about so, that. So nothing is official official yet. There's no date in place. But, uh, you know, he met with Dana White. Uh, he, he rumored it with Dana beginning this year, January, February. Then he had some messages. And, you know, he's, he's kind of said this before throughout the last couple years, kind of flirting with the comeback, either through Instagram or Twitter. He's 37 years old now. But we know, you know, Nick Diaz knows how to fight. And the other unique thing about Nick he stays in shape. You know, he has yeah. this, he loves triathlons. He likes to eat vegan. So he's not the guy that's sitting back drinking beers, drinking bad food, getting out of shape. He had one pick he posted two months ago and he was shredded, like best shape of his life. So he actually had the meeting with Dana one month ago, right? And Dana's talked about it, talked about it. But his recent talks are, you know, he, his talks were, listen, I don't think he's going to fight. I don't think he wants to fight. We'll see when he started chirping on social. And then after he met with him, Dana's last quote was, it looks like it's very likely Nick Diaz is going to fight by the end of this year. So it looks like we're going to have a neat Nick Diaz card by the end yeah. of 2021. So what's your initial reactions? You look like when it, when Dana yeah. says the non bullshitter guy, it looks like it's happening for real now. Well, let's be real. Like we're all huge Diaz brother fans, especially Nick, yeah. uh, you know, coming from California, just coming from, uh, yeah, I just love the style, the jiu-jitsu style, the, you know, the the no no shit, they don't take any shit, <laughs> yeah. you know, they rep their town, like, I'm all for that. So, I, w I would love to see Nick come back and fight Robbie Lawler, Yeah, uh, you know, like get that, that rematch. Too. You know, even though Robbie's been a little bit more active, and, uh, you know, Robbie's been, you know, he, he's got good days and he's got bad yeah, yeah. bad bad days, but, you know, that'd be a good fight, you know. It'll Rob be a great fight. Yeah, it'll be a great fight, like. I wouldn't really want to see the Condon or, or Cerrone. Uh, I think the Robbie Lawler, since they've fought in the past, it kind of like it's kind of cool, right? Yeah, some nostalgia to it. I think yeah. bring a lot of the old school MMA fans, it would be just a, just all out excitement. Yeah, fun time. yeah. So I'm down for that one. So you know, I wanted to ask you, Chris, the the big thing with him coming back. Of course, he's a highly highly touted fighter. He was always a top contender. Great, great fighter, right? Should he come back and face a top contender? You know, the one, the old school guys, like you mentioned, are the Robbie Lawler, Lawler Carlos, Carlos Condit, Cerrone. You know, get a fight in that's, you know, low chance of getting KO'd or sparked, and it's going to be a good match, and, you know, get back into it. Or some people say he used to jump in again with a top contender mm. so he can be the fight, a fight away from the title shot of Vicente Luque or Jorge Masvidal or Kobe Covington, those type of guys, which – to be honest, kind of scared me as guys that could probably take Nick out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the Cowboy Cerrone fight because yeah. Cerrone's on his way out. Uh, but at the same time, like I don't think he should fight Masvidal right away. I don't think he should fight Luke Gay right away. Yeah. Uh, you know, give him somebody who's got a ton of fights under their belt. They've been fighting for a while, yeah. and you know, a fight that the fans want to see. You know, the fans don't want to see him just fight a, a nobody. Yeah, and, and as much as Nick gets paid they're probably going to give him somebody tough or somebody yeah. that can draw some uh, some fan base. I bet. I like the Robbie Lawler, the nostalgia. Yeah. Them throwing back all those old highlights. Yeah, yeah, why not? So, let's do it. Book him, book him UFC, Sean Shelby. Get that going. All right, let's move on to the next topic. We've got the heavyweight drama. we got to talk about it. Recently booked Lewis, Derek Lewis for Cyber Gain is for UFC 265 on August 7th. So this is the interim title bout. And now Naganu's team is is upset because, you know, he was begging begging for an interim title bout when they yeah. delayed on booking Stipe's match, and it was like ten months, and, and he fought Jerizi and Rosenstrike in between then, KO'd him, and wanted that to be interim, and didn't happen. Now his last title defense was only you know when he beat Stipe that was only three and a half months ago. Yeah, and the UFC already triggers the interim because. What's going on is they're trying to negotiate with, with Naganu for Lewis, and they're trying to negotiate Naganu for Jones if they can get Jones to agree on his pay. So they have like this 
these three guys that are trying to make work, and the UFC uses this as a negotiation tactic. Well, if you're not going to take that pay for that fight, we'll offer it to someone else. Even if you're the champ, they can still do that on you because they got these interim title belts. Well, you're not going to take it. We know you're the champ. We'll just make an interim title uh, title fight then. We'll we'll get gone in here after a good performance. So what do you think? So Stipe and John Jones are waiting on the outside. It was like they were kind of turning on Jones and just letting him sit there. Now they're kind of turning on Nagana, who wants more pay. And, and uh, this is a quick turnaround. So what are your thoughts on them booking that interim interim heavyweight bout? Yeah, like we talked about before, I'm, yeah. I'm not a fan of the interim belt unless the champion is injured or can't yeah, compete, yeah, yeah. right? Because uh, of this contract negotiation stuff, now they're trying to do this interim. I feel like that's a slap in you know a slap in the face, in my opinion, yeah. especially the champ. So, but I know the UFC still has to put on main events. They still have to uh, make it. You know, something people want to watch. Yeah. And everybody likes to watch championship fights. If it's interim or if it's the real belt. And we, we both know, like, WWE. Like, I know the difference between uh, the international interim champion between a regular champion. So, yeah. I think probably there's some fans out there that don't know the difference either. they just like, oh, belt, the champ. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah definitely. So... You know, I, I don't like personally seeing that, but at the same time, I understand the UFC has to put on main events. Yeah, I can see that. It makes the five-round fight. It brings the belt in the octagon. It, it gives the guarantee to the winner, gets the next title shot. So both these guys who are hungry for a title shot, you know, this is the UFC keeping them happy, Lewis and Gon. They're going to get the championship belt pay, so they'll get that bonus pay. Is there fight. interim champs for every weight division, or are they just kind of pick and choose what when they want to do an interim belt? They pick and choose, and it's supposed to be based off the reason interims were brought brought in were yeah. based off, like you said, based off injuries or cannot yeah. compete, but he stays the champion. Yeah. Now they've slowly been used as, like, negotiation tactics. Yeah. You know, hey, we can bring we can. That's why, and, and that's exactly what I think they're doing, too, with this Nagano situation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't like seeing it. So, yeah, but so, it would be cool though if you won the interim and then won the actual belt. It would be cool, so or it'd be cool interim if they champ booked. and the real champ. That would be pretty cool. This is a quick turnaround. July, August. I was hoping maybe they can book Naganu Jones like for September, and then like then those two winners. It'll be like a yeah. tournament. And kudos to Gon to like step in right away and, and and fight. You know, Lewis. Yeah, he's looking good. But yeah, at the end of the day. I'm excited for this heavyweight bout, uh, even though it is a little shade on Nagano and John Jones. Uh, I think with Lewis and Gon, this is an interesting matchup. It's almost like the power versus the uh, endurance, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. We'll see how that one works out. All right, let's move on. The next topic we've got Sarah Alpar start, starts a GoFundMe. So this is a UFC woman's fighter, and she had two camps where she went through and had her fight canceled. Mm. And what she put out there in the public is, hey, guys, you know, I spend a lot of money for my camp, my gym, my nutrition, my travel, and I'm working and going to school. It's really hard for me to keep keep up with this to try to get another fight. You know, two two camps in a row canceled after she's gone through it. So she started a GoFundMe account to see if she can raise 30000 to try to go in to be a full-time fighter. She said, I want to quit my job. I want to go in and be a full-time fighter for this camp. And um, Jake Paul saw this. And so what he did, you know, of course, he's he's highly controversial against the UFC and fighter pay, et cetera. So he went in and donated five thousand dollars to it. Wow. So she was at three thousand. He donated five thousand. And then Triller heard about this, too, that that she you know was trying to be a full time fighter. Can't make it on her own. Triller came in and donated twenty five thousand. No freaking pushing the way. GoFundMe over thirty grand. And Jake Paul just released something yesterday. It says, Schmidt, imagine a, a rookie in the NBA that had to start a GoFundMe to play. I let Sarah, and her, her handle is Too Sweet Alpar, know that she has my support in my contribution. It's my honor and privilege to help a fellow fighter in any way I can. Mm-hmm. And so for, we'll get your initial thoughts. You know, let's get him right now. What do you, what do you think about this overall? And then Jake coming in and really put, pushing this donation and getting getting her this uh, awareness. I should have started a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you know what I mean. Like, you should have, yeah. That's yeah, true. I guess I still can. Yeah, do it. But uh, <laughs> I've always had trouble asking for help, especially financially. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's you know just the man kind of thing. Like I want to do things for myself and I want to like Pride, make money for, sure. for myself. But, you know, as I've gotten older and I've talked to, like, successful people, 
uh, a big reason why they're successful is they're not scared to ask for help, mm-hmm. especially from other people who are more successful. You know what I mean? So like, I I've been trying to do that a little bit more. Like if I'm struggling with something or if I need help, not being afraid to ask for it because a lot of times like people people want to help. Yeah. You know they they feel good helping, especially if they had the needs to help and they can you know get something out of it if it's whatever you know. Uh, so you know, kudos to her to like having the the guts to do that because like it's hard to ask for help, especially financial help. And it's really cool for Jake and, and Triller to you know throw in all that money. Like I just hope she re- uses it for the right reasons. For her camps, yeah. And she better she better come find her a real camp and 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 use that money wisely because. Um, you know, every fighter, especially at that level, can use, you know, an extra 35 grand to, to focus just on fighting. And you do have to be selfish when, when you're trying to be an MMA fighter. You have to, you know, relationships suffer. Uh, a lot of your body, every, a lot of things suffer, you know, uh, family, uh, whatever type of relationships there is. But um, so uh, that's kind of cool to see. What's actually really cool to see. And hopefully uh, she does well in the UFC. Yeah, I agree. And kudos to Jake for doing that. On the other side, just for me, my other angle on this, thinking like uh, you know, strategist and a businessman, is I see that, of course, you know, they put up real cash. It's gonna, be, they're gonna change her life. It's gonna help her really go all in on fighting. On the other side, it's a great public perception of Jake Paul helping the UFC fighters, Triller, who's been begging and begging and begging Dana White to release GSP's contract. And finally, you know, Dana was like, Triller, stop effing texting me. Stop calling me. Stop messaging me on Instagram. I don't want to deal with you guys. He totally pushed them off. And this is a way to Triller to come in. They released a statement. We enjoy supporting all athletes and fighters, blah, blah, This makes them look good for fighters that are getting cut or leaving the UFC to have a good perception of Triller and yeah. going to fight with them on their influencer cards, if you will. And it makes Jake looks good, and it's going to be good publicity for Jake. So I see it. On one side, them, them doing a good deed. I also see it as a PR uh, play for them to get good PR for all the fighters, the respect. A tax and write-off for Triller. A little, a little tax write-off for them. And, and already I see all in the comments, fighters are like, you know, they're saying respect to Triller, respect yeah, to Jake yeah, Paul yeah, for doing for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you can't respect. There's no reason why you shouldn't respect that. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's interesting. They're going to constantly poke, poke, poke and try to get Dana White and the UFC's uh, attention to get more fighter pay. And you know they want, uh, when those fighters retire and they have uh, their contract are hung up with the UFC, they want the UFC to be able to just release them, especially yeah. a guy like GSP. No, I agree. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Last one. I don't know if you caught this. Joe Schilling was at a bar. He bumped into a guy at the bar. Uh, who looked like a casual guy, and when he bumped into him, he turned around, looked like the guy said something, we'll try to catch it, um, and you don't say that to Joe Schilling, and Joe Schilling knocked him out with, with one punch. Yeah, so I did hear about this. I heard Joe knocked him out with a two-piece and a biscuit yeah, that's what it was. or something. I don't know what, what it was, but if we can see the video. Yeah, let's bring it up. Let's let's pop it up so you can yeah. see it, Chris, so I can get your... Uh... And this is why I don't like going out, honestly. I've, I've had this happen to me before. Uh, you know, it's either the way I look or they see my ears or something. Okay, so here's the guy at the bar. So he's hanging out with his girlfriend. He's got a the guy with the tie. Yeah, I got the tie. Uh, he's obviously he lo- drinking. He looks like a dude. So he's like, drinking. He's yelling stuff. Blah, blah. Having a good time. Another guy's coming by. Boom. Okay, look. He barely bumps into Joe. And then he says something to him. Watch out. Watch what you're doing. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Knocked out cold. Oh, my God. <laughs> now let's watch it one more time here. Let it play. He's talking about something, almost like a fighting move. He's laughing, talking to someone sitting down. And then Joe just leans into him, boom, bumps into him. Right here what he says to him. We don't know what he says. He said, hey, watch where you're going, something like that. Damn. He, he obviously gave a bad look to Joe, and Joe says, okay. One shot. He's like, I'm not talking. That right just... hand. Let me see that one more time. Sorry. <laughs> it was just a short right like yeah, this. Yeah, it was like a short little right uppercut. Yeah, leave the volume. Leave the volume. Let's hear it. Oh, that dude's hammered, too. Thought he was tough. Oh, he said, bro, something. Oh, wow. Uh, uh... That first, he was done yeah. at that first hit. So, okay, I saw the dude try to, like, flinch on Joe. He flinched on him, and that's why he got socked. Yeah, yeah you don't flinch on Joe. Look, he said, oh. what? He said, what? God. Okay, let's cut that, Jeff. Cut that video. That's good. So there's two sides of this. Yes, you, you don't you, 
maybe Joe's having a beer. That guy's drunk. He he bumps him, talks a little trash. My thought is for Joe Schilling, a guy who's you know glory kicks boxer. He had his run in Bellator. He's a deadly fighter, right? He could not knock that guy out with any limb of his body, any anything he wanted to do with that guy. He beats him twenty out of twenty times, right? He knows he has that power over that guy. I wouldn't like him, you know, grab him by the collar or give him a warning or say or slap him, give a little stop yeah. and slap. To KO him cold like that, to drop the concrete and bang his head on the ground, he's knocked out cold in front of his friends and, and girl. It's a little quick. And Joe Schilling, now that he's getting, uh, you know, police reach out to him, this and that, he said he was scared for his life and protecting himself. I don't believe that for one second oh, yeah. at all. He's got to. He's got to say that. He's got to say that because that's yeah. how you legally get away with it. So now you saw the video. You see the background story. What, what, are, your, what are your thoughts on his Man, uh, it's hard to to hold back sometimes. You know, we don't know the situation if Joe was drinking. It definitely looks like the other guy was drunk. Oh, yeah. And he physically was aggressive. If you notice, he did one of these, like, what? Like, he yeah, gave him, like, yeah. like, when you do that to somebody, especially that when you're fighter. in the area to get, like, punched, you're going to probably get punched. Yeah. That's like spitting on somebody and not expecting to get punched. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I probably have to do with a flex on me like that after – we don't know what he said either. True. If he would have said something a little snickery and then already got me on, on alert, yeah. and then when I turned around, he did the flinch, boom, boom, I probably would have punched him too. Or, you're right, I probably would have grabbed his tie and just, like, yanked him down and probably pinned him. Yeah, maybe something. Because, like – but you never know. Like, the reflex we're, – we're fighters, man. Like, yeah. you know, we have – the our number one reaction is to fight. Uh, you know, it's something, and of course, we have to like, be disciplined, and that's where discipline and everything comes into play. But at the same time, like if I had a couple brewskis in me, yeah, and some dude trying to step up, he might get he might get a two piece in the soda he, too. He <laughs> <laughs> and Joe did not look like he was in good mood. He he no. mood. He was walk. He was he looked, straight face walking. He through looked like him. he was pissed, right? Yeah. So maybe he caught him at the wrong time. Yeah. Said the wrong thing. Especially the one thing I didn't notice that is that he did that little faint flinch thing. And to a guy like Joe, he's used to fainting back or throwing a punch after he sees something like that. So he Who was, was filming that. How did they have that such you get like they were filming him, the guy dancing with his girl. They're filming out. another guy? Another guy, yeah. So that's how it didn't meant to be Joe. Oh, they're probably filming like, look at this drunk dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's looking like an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then he gets t- <laughs> socked up by Joe Schilling. She, Joe Schilling just put him out. So Joe, take it easy, man. And he he's trying to justify what he did. He's been making posts on Instagram and Twitter, etc. And now, obviously, some allegations are coming toward him, towards him because he released a statement. Hey, guys, I was you know scared for my life, and I defended myself. Typical thing you say. Uh, you know, I could tell attorney said, hey, this is what you have to say for no charges to go through. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah, for sure. So chill out. That guy is going to be all right. Joe will be all right. But uh, a little wild with these UFC guys uh, or MMA guys, excuse me, belt, former Bellator fighter out there in, in the wild. That's going to wrap it up for today, guys, for the MMA Rundown. Thanks for watching. This MMA Rundown is brought to you by FanDuel. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel. For all you guys watching out there in podcast land, we appreciate you. Numbers are jumping. Uh, Thanks for having you guys. Thanks for listening and, and being with us, guys, on the MMA Rundown. We'll see you next time. See ya.